Ozan, good morning. Huh? Good morning, members. We have a quorum, and we are late by five minutes already. Let us invite the officials to, and also the deputations into our room. Good morning. The purpose of today's meeting is to listen um, to the views of groups and individuals in respect of the editorial independence of the RTHK. May I welcome the government officials and also uh, groups and individuals who have been invited to attend the meeting. Please put on your earpiece. And uh, channel zero is the floor, channel one is Cantonese, and channel two is English. I'd like to remind you uh, that apart from legal members and appointed officials, or designated officials who are attending today's meeting, any uh, submissions, uh, whether oral or written, uh, is not protected by the legal powers and privileges ordinance. And members are reminded to uh, pay attention to the declaration of interest under sections 83A and 84 of the um, rules of procedure. You have to declare your direct and indirect pecuniary interest. Now, each um, uh, I'll invite the officials to um, give an opening remark first, and then I invite the groups to give. Uh, their views, and then members will, uh, and each group or individual will be given three minutes. And please do not use cocktail language to facilitate interpretation. Um, we, I've already approved um, the um, Hong RTHQ Program Staff Union uh, to attend uh, today's meeting. And uh, the chairman, Ms. Choi, is not able to attend today's meeting. And we therefore uh, have. The um, committee member, Ms. Choi, and the uh, former chairperson of the union, Ms. Janet Mack, attending our meeting. I invite the officials to speak first. We have the permanent secretary, Ms. Susie Ho, the deputy secretary, Ms. Joe Wong, the director of broadcasting, and also uh, Mr. Roy Tang and Deputy Director of Broadcasting, Mr. Tai Kin Man. Um, Ms. Ho, please. Five minutes. Now, our long administration attached importance to the RTHK um, in its discharging of responsibility of um, DBS, uh, um, uh, public PBS, rather, and there is editorial independence. And the Charter has set out the objectives and mission and vision of the RTHK, and the editorial principles adhered to. 
um, under the uh, charter, the director is responsible for ensuring the uh, setting up and also implementation of the producer's guide and to provide accurate and partial objective news public affairs and general programming. As the editor in chief, the DFB is responsible for making for making final decision in RTHK is accountable for editorial decisions of the RTHK. As for earlier media reports, um, the um, Director of Broadcasting has already explained to the Ledge Show and the media concerning details of the case in to, to um, deal with the concerns of the public. As for um, political um, mission appointed uh, in fact, all civil servants have to comply with the, uh, the uh, civil service code, and they have to be impartial. If civil servants are viewed that they are tasked to do something in breach of political neutrality, they neutrality, they can lodge complaints. A civil servant will not be penalized for lodging complaint, which is made in good faith. The government will continue to handle staff management and promotion matters in a fair and impartial manner, in accordance with the established mechanism. Mr. Chairman, I'm happy uh, to hear the views of the groups and deputation, uh, groups of, and individuals who are invited to attend today's meeting. I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ho. I now invite the former chairman of the um, Program Staff Union of the RGH game, Ms. Jeanette Mack, to speak. Thank you, Chairman. We are the only PSB in Hong Kong. Um, defending editorial independence is a long-term war. It's a pity that in the past year we have faced a lot of internal interference. Those in power are, are arrogant, and they use their, and they make in, um, unfair decisions and out of out of their whims. Um, the um, OAO, Mr. Tang, claimed that he is the editor editor in chief, and he make the final decision, and he take the fine he takes the final responsibility. But I want to tell the director, Mr. Roy Tang, that Hong Kong, the RTHK is not your own radio or your own uh, broadcaster. You cannot just say you take the responsibility and you can do whatever you like. Hong RTHK has a history of more than 80 years. Maintaining there is an editorial system maintaining the effective operation of the RTHK. Uh, as for editorial, in the, uh, editorial independence, I will spend some time on this. The editorial system is a gatekeeping procedure. At different uh, levels, the staff members, based on their own professional knowledge, conduct rational analysis and make independent and professional judgment. If there is any controversial decision to be made, the frontline officers will seek professional advice from their superiors, and they will report to their superiors. You may ask what is meant by editorial independence. Does it mean that the editorial independence of the director of broadcasting or the uh, editorial independence of the staff members. This is, if you emphasize on one part, this is not. This is only part of the story. We want to stress that this editorial independence is a kind of referral system. Uh, this is the backbone. The referral system is the backbone. When there are controversial editorial decisions to be made, the frontline staff, the uh, reporters. And editors will have to uh, seek editorial to, to seek professional advice from the uh, executive producers. And if it is more controversial, or the higher the controversy, controversy, then uh, the higher level will uh, reports will be made to a higher level. And the decision is based on professional uh, dialogue, and we adhere to our code. And the decision should not include other elements such as political consideration. Now, although the director of broadcasting is ahead, does it mean that he cannot uh, make the decision? I'd like to tell you that the director, the director of broadcasting can make a decision. He can call the shots, but the decision has to be made about according to professional knowledge.
It is a professional judgment. Now the um, district, the, the AO is parachuted into the place. His thinking and his professional knowledge is different from a professional media person. It goes contrary to the mindset of a professional media person. AOs shouldn't be appointed to the post of director of broadcasting. Let the professionals lead the uh, this um, the, the the broadcasting and let the AOs do the AOs work and not in the uh, director of broadcasting. Thank you, Ms. Mac. You have uh, used one more minute, so I'll let your colleague, Ms. Choi, to supplement. I don't have anything to say. Next, Ms. Leung Wing Man. Thank you, Chairman. Now, uh, Tong Chi Hua criticized Headliner as something that is of low taste, and then people understood that RTHK doesn't have editorial independence, and we have a battle ahead to fight for that. Whenever we see programs that criticize the government, we understand that the RTHK has won this battle. However, Roy Tang is an AO and he is now leading the RTHK. This is really a setback to RTHK. The city forum places sit empty chairs and Tang said that we said uh, we are embarrassing the officials and forever see said that because he refused to take up political missions then he is not being promoted to uh, to assistant director for a public affairs program in fact, we can invite many guests to be interviewed. For example, last week we were supposed to interview people involved in Lingnan University principal election. However, we did not invite the guests we wanted. Roy Tang, as the chief editor, Asked how come we chose Ma Kwok Ming instead of Chen Kwok Hon? Does it mean that if he asked this question, then we have to report to him about our decision? People sitting on the high rank because they earn it with the experience. For an AO to lead the uh, station, it is an insult to the broadcaster. If his decision can override the decisions of those experienced, more experienced, then it is also an insult. Let the head override the decision of a group of producers is really too much for an editor to do. The Civic Party supports using the powers and privilege to make inquiry to see if uh, Forever C was demoted because he refused to take a political mission. Next, Mr. Wong Chen Pong from uh, Hong Kong Media. Hong Kong Media is an independent organization. The government keeps saying that this incident is the internal affairs of RTHK, but it is an in incident about freedom of speech. So it's important for us to support RTHK. The Hong Kong me in media has submitted a written submission. First of all, we asked Roy Tang to step down. This incident happened three years ago. It seemed that it was a long time ago, but I think the public made it clear that they feel Roy Tang is interfering with the editorial independence of frontline staffers of RTHK. I think the government is playing with words in their reply. Editorial independence is not something for the broad, um, director of broadcasting to say. 
It's not something he ca alone can decide. Mr. Poon, who is the uh, experienced producer of Hong Kong Connection, he is not here today. And he criticized Tang for bypassing the whole system and make a, your own editorial decision. You are actually violating the established system of RTHK. My third point is about reforms of the system in RTHK. I don't think AO should be parachuted to head the station to be the director of broadcasting. In fact, the director of broadcasting should be f someone from the station. It should v be promoted via internal promotion so as to maintain reporting, a stable reporting system. Next, the so-called RTHK advisory committee set up by the administration is something that's out of the system because within the RTHK there has already been a 100 odd person formed committee. I think the administration set up its own unit to interfere with editorial decisions. Next, I want to talk about long-term broadcasting policy. The administration should decide whether the RTHK should be an independent department. Next, about public broadcasting. For community to take part in that, I don't think they are really taking part in that. Next, Mr. Oyulam from Democratic Party. In uh, September 2009, Roy Tang was parachuted as the head of RTHK. He is an AO. And uh, since he took office, two radio show hosts were sacked. City Forum was criticized. And uh, for City Forum to place empty chairs, it was also criticized by Tang. His way of dealing with these issues were criticized, and the uh, public worried about his how he deals with such issues. This March, acting assistant director of the station Forever C acting appointments ended because he refused to take up political missions assigned by Roy Tang. That is, he refused to change headliners to ATV to be aired. When Mr. Tang attended a Lesh Copano, he rejected such accusations. However, in a newspaper column, he said he asked the producers of the program to give him a report about how they came up with their ideas. He even asked how costumes was, choose, was chosen to be reported. In a survey conducted in April, the Democratic Party found that Many staffers agreed Tang exercised political pressure, and over 60% of those polled supported RTHK to be independent from the administration because that can ensure editorial independence of the station and ensure freedom of speech. Our party thinks Roy Tang created white terror within the station, and he is undermining staff morale. We suspect he carries political mission and he tries to clamp down on voices criticizing the government. We urge Roy Tang to step down and we don't think AO should be parachuted to head the station. Rather someone experienced should be appointed to head the station. We object any parties and any persons interfering with the operation of RTHK, we urge the administration to change RTHK to be an independent radio station to ensure its independence and editorial independence. Next, Mr. Chen Kuang Chef from DAB. Good morning, Chairman. I'm from DAB. Freedom of speech is one of the core values in Hong Kong. The DAB supports safeguarding editorial independence of RTHK and it should be free from political influence. Inside and outside the LASHCO, we will monitor the uh, government to see if it 
puts in place and implements the charter of RTHK and to ensure freedom of speech. We believe RTHK will serve as a public service broadcaster and encourage public participation via its quality programs. The programs will serve as platforms for people with different views to air their views. Freedom of speech in Hong Kong is welcomed by many people around the world. Even Edward Snowden comes to Hong Kong to make his revelations about U.S. invading privacy. Still, credibility of media is not something we can be proud of. 70% of people polled think that Hong Kong people enjoy sufficient freedom of speech. However, 50% of people think the freedom is being abused and 30% of people think the media is not responsible. And the media uh, only make a barely pass score within the House of the People. RTHK is part of the media, so the station should see whether there is room for improvement. Go to RTHK website and search for Occupy Central. You can find 100 stories. 90% are supporting the campaign. Less than 1% denounce the movement. Even for radio hosts, most of them support the campaign. People think that when they phone up the station to say they do not agree with the campaign, they will not be their foot calls will not be picked up. So I wonder whether the RTHK is really reporting the whole truth. If not, then the credibility of RTHK will be undermined. I'm not here to target any organizations. I'm simply here to say that the media plays an important role in monitor monitoring the government. They should enjoy freedom like editorial independence. However, it should be also credible. With credibility, they should produce fair and even handed programs it should the programs should be like a courtroom for people to express the both sides of an issue so the station should enhance its credibility and the RTHK should see whether it now fulfills the expectations of the public and it should improve itself to make quality programs next pardon me Ms. Janice Fung out, uh, from uh, Lion Rock Institute. The Lion Rock Institute is strongly against the Hong Kong government paying the RTHK. The funding should be zero. Now, before we talk uh, about the RTHK, let me share with you an incident. I went to the ITB panel meeting uh, representing the Lion Rock Institute. Uh, we oppose the interference of the government into the uh, shareholder dispute with the DAB digital uh, broadcasting company, and we we were the only one that opposed that. And we, uh, if you look at the Legco um, uh, broad, uh, broadcasting uh, record, uh, there was a there was booing against me, and uh, I was nearly uh, my right. Uh, to speak was nearly taken away because viewing, and the chairman had to interrupt it. Uh, uh, had to interrupt me and ask those who are making cat calls to uh, stop making such noise. Now uh, it said that um, the dispute between Albert Chang and Wang uh, Huang Chubiao uh, was mainly uh, ab about uh, a dispute on money. And then when I uh, went out of Legco, I was accused. Uh, and later, uh, Albert Chang uh, sold his shares to Wang Chubiao, and then um, even the chairman said that uh, he was going after money. So that supported my um, assessment, uh, my right to uh, of freedom of speech should be uh, respected. I also said that if government wants to interfere with editorial independence of RTHK, RTHK will become a brainwashing machine for the administration. So uh, for the benefit of independent 
uh, independence of thinking. Um, we, the government should stop interfering with the RTHK. Roy Tang was alleged of interfering with the, in, uh, the uh, in, um, editorial independence of RTHK. Now, director of broadcasting is the one who received pay from the government and he is uh, to do something about RTHK and he called the shots of all the programs of the RTHK. If you want to maintain editorial independence of RTHK and don't let RTHK to be an, a, a brainwashing machine, then the um, RTHK should be privatized and government funding should be kept to zero. As for the uh, DBC, you didn't listen to me and you were slow in learning that. Please support our organization so that we can uh, ensure the independence of the RTHK. Next is Mr. Wong Hak Lim. Thank you, Chairman. As an independent uh, trade union, we fully understand and that our operation uh, 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 there is a need to maintain um, core values of um, integrity, uh, clean government, independence of the media, uh, uh, rule of law, so on and so forth. The uh, independent media is a fourth uh, power outside um, the um, tra um, uh, there must be freedom of expression and uh, free and news freedom, and they will be uh, the media is responsible for uh, speaking out for um, freedom and human rights. In 1998, former um, CPPCC delegate said that uh, a headliner was weird, and C.H. Tong, the then CE, said that it. Uh, the uh, headliner was also bad taste, and uh, there was proposed. And then uh, the uh, major, the two hosts of the headliners were sacked. And then, um, in the past ten years or so, RTHK has been uh, attacked by pro-China media and also uh, from the establishment. The RTHK was accused of taking money from the government and criticizing the government. So uh, RTHK is expected uh, to be uh, dealt with. And then uh, after Roy Tang took power, headliner was said uh, was uh, proposed to be transferred to be aired at the ATV. Um, and also um, Lechko, today in Lechko, uh, was also um, scrapped. And then the empty chance then led to a warning and that uh, government officials shouldn't be embarrassed embarrassed. As for uh, the headliners, the producers will have to give a full account of their brainstorming. And it's also said that the acting assistant director uh, refused to take up a political mission, therefore he was sacked. This is uh, conducting white terror, is uh, trying to, what he is doing is trying to silent the uh, RTHK, and he, he is a, uh, in fact, Roy Tang is the uh, killer who is to um, kill the RTHK's independence. Now, it's said that the, uh, um, uh, now Mr. C refuses to take political, take up his political mission. He paid a uh, cost. It's the cost paid not only by himself, but also by the members of the public, because the editorial freedom of uh, RTHK is stifled. RTHK has to supervise, uh, has to monitor the government on behalf of the public. Roy Tang ha doesn't have the uh, professional knowledge as a media person. He is just exercising his power at his whims. Um, the CE has four major missions, and then uh, dealing with the RTHK is one of the major tasks. I think the LegCo members should defend the uh, independent role of the RTHK as a public uh, broadcaster. Next is Ms. Wong Kit Wai. Uh, I speak on behalf of um, RTH, former RTHK staff members who have resigned or who have retired. We want to de we uh, we are media person. The RTHK has all along being dedicated to uh, work for the interests of the uh, members of public and um, produce fair-minded programs. Uh, you may say that we receive government pay and therefore we should be the mouthpiece of the government, but we are not using government money. We are using public money because me the members of the public are the bosses. 
and the RGHK is to enable the government to communicate well with the members of the public. And we need to uh, look back into history. In the 1970s, Hong Kong people experienced 1967 riots. We came into contact with Western culture. We saw unfairness in the community. We felt dissatisfied with the government to maintain stability in society, apart from organizing uh, youth centers, uh, district officers, liaison officers, um, contacted the people, tried to understand what people need uh, about uh, concerning uh, uh, to us, uh, what were people's expectations as the government. RTHK played the role of the bridge. It didn't tell lies. It reported, tr it reported the truth. This role started in the 1970s, and this um, and the values were uh, passed on from one generation to the other. We therefore have all kinds of uh, media programs like um, Under the Lion Rock, uh, Legco, um, Today's Leg Today in Legco, and also uh, Headliners and uh, Hong Kong Connections, and so on and so forth. We are committed to produce high quality programs for the people of Hong Kong. Every uh, shot is the result of a lot of efforts. Um, put into by our um, staff members. In terms of the themes selected and also the content, we have a high level of independence. Even if it is a joint program with other government departments as frontline producers, we attach importance to our editorial freedom, which is hard won. The, uh, the editorial freedom is the result of a hard and long fight with the government. In uh, doing our programs, we try to be impartial, fair-minded. Uh, whatever generation we belong, we uphold the value of uh, editorial independence in the promotion um, arrangement. Obviously, apart from con uh, considering skills and other standard, is the editorial sense and judgment. This is very important, and the RTHK has all along attaches importance to independent thinking. Professional media persons know that if the program is just a lie, then RTHK is thought to be will be thought to be a mouthpiece of the government and will not get the public's trust. But the uh, director, who is an AO, doesn't understand the role of the RTHK and thinks that the RTHK is a government department and has to comply with the wishes of government officials. Today, for FSC suffers the oppression. Tomorrow. Um, other people, other RTHK professionals will suffer the same, and they will, uh, if they are just thinking about how they're going to uh, explain themselves in front of the director, then he will uh, forsake um, the credibility hard earned by the RTHK, and the government will lose his um, communication uh, with the members' public. Um, the fourth power is very important. This is a view of the Labour Party. The media is to this uh, to expose unfairness and uh, and maladministration. It is a very important um, bulwark for uh, de democracy and freedom. There is a great more and more serious censorship, and we can see that press freedom is on the decline. This year, the um, AO is parachuted into the RTHK, trying to turn RTHK into the mouthpiece of the government. Um, since Roy Tang took office, there uh, have been a series of incidents showing that the RTHK uh, is um, making um, use of uh, this AO uh, to clamp down on the RTHK and try to clamp down on public broadcasting. Uh, we just uh, can cite uh, one more example, one or two examples to show that Roy Tang is concerned about city forums discussion about, um, uh, and he is concerned only about the empty chair whether it would uh, it would embarrass government officials, and he doesn't care about other things about this, the fairness of city forum, and he his main uh, concern is the embarrassment caused. To government officials, the management also proposed in the future, if uh, an empty chair is to be placed, the director of broadcasting's consent has to be uh, sought instead of just a, a referral or reporting arrangement. Uh, as for the production of headliner, the uh, production staff members are asked to give a full account of their uh, brainstorming process. He also uh, he, he asked for a chronology. 
uh, of um, using Hitler as one of um, the roles in a um, in, in a section of the program. And this uh, caused fear among staff members and hinder um, freedom of creation. He is setting, he is trying to set up walls and barriers. And he tried to uh, transfer Hong, Hong Kong Connection and headliners to ATV. Um, he later uh, said that uh, there was um, no intention to uh, transfer that program to ATV forever. That is only, um, he is only uh, lying. As for the defer or deferment of recruiting civil servants, the number of contract staff has, uh, increase, uh, has increased to 40 percent of uh, the um, strength of the RTHK, and some uh, contracts as short as three months. This reduces a sense of belonging, undermines the independence of RTHK. All in all, we are the view that Roy Tang has to be responsible for the above uh, mistakes and he is not suitable to be director of broadcasting. The government should not appoint AOs to be the directors of director of broadcasting. A public service broadcaster should be free from political and financial pressure. The government should pass laws to ensure uh, independence of the RTHK. Next, uh, Ms. Mabel Lau. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members, uh, Hong Kongers uh, should fight for uh, independent uh, uh, freedom of speech. Uh, uh, we fight for the independent editorial independence of the HK. Uh, freedom of speech is a core value of the people of Hong Kong, and we are proud of that freedom. Freedom of speech will lead to different ideas, and the exchange of ideas will lead to progress in society. RTHK uh, has a right to editorial independence. That is very important. Um, uh, um, radio programs are not just criticizing the government. Uh, radio programs or the RTHK programs can bring um, social issues to us and let us think over the issues and make our own decision. If the government decides on what should be broadcast and what shouldn't be broadcasted, then it is just like keeping a, a bird in a cage. And the bird doesn't have any more freedom when it's, once it's in the cage. Just like the people of Hong Kong, we want to air our views and the grievances. If you don't allow us to speak up, then we will, uh, we will fight for that. We, uh, I support the editorial independence of THK, but there must, some lines have to be drawn. RTHK is the government's mouthpiece. Uh, the gov the RTHK should not go overboard in criticizing the government. It doesn't mean uh, that uh, we shouldn't uh, show respect uh, to the government officials. J just I don't like you parachuting an official to um, um, look after, uh, to manage me, uh, manage the RTHK, then we should go against it. Even if uh, the RTHK has editorial freedom, the uh, RTHK should speak from its conscience and should be fair-minded. And whether you uh, you have to both uh, to show your support as well as um, your criticisms, uh, the um, the, um, the RTHK should be even-handed in depicting uh, the scenario. The government officials uh, should not sell people of Hong Kong under the river. Whether you will be promoted or not, uh, you should. Uh, uh, maintain uh, your good reputation is that of uh, being criticized uh, forever. Uh, I support editorial freedom of RTHK. Even if there is editorial freedom, some lines have to be drawn, and the government should not be so harsh as to take away editorial freedom. Hey, Lam Pui Yan, uh, Lam Yan Pui. Next, Ms. Lam Yan Pui. Chairman, good morning. As a member of public, of course, I want more freedom of speech. RTHK all along serves Hong Kong public. It's their mission. They should carry on. And they should provide a platform for people to air their views freely. As a public broadcaster, the RTHK should reflect views in a fair manner and should be even-handed to people who want to speak and they should not be under economic or political influence. To produce more diversified programs, the RTHK should let all the executive producers to do their job. It's not letting them to go free to go whatever to do whatever they want. 
is a kind of trust. Say, for example, in a company, your boss tells you you can uh, do according to your own rules, and after you've done that, he says you should follow every instruction he gives. Now, if that happens, will people put their heart and soul into their work? So I think we should trust the producer, producing team to trust that they will bring about quality programs that will reveal the truth about society. The director says that the City Forum headliners and Lashko Review, they are overlapping in contents and that people already have shows that broadcast Lashko meetings live. However, does the director understand that these shows air the views in different manners? If all these shows are cut, does it mean that members of the public can only watch live broadcasting of the meeting and to see how the member, how Lashko members speak about the bush? It would be very boring. We need analytical news programs. So RTHK should maintain editorial independence and be fair and even in their reporting. Next, Mr. Yu Quanlock. Anthony Yu, good morning. Of course, though the contents of the charter should be followed because the charter is not just a show. We have to ensure that RTHK enjoys editorial independence, otherwise we will be lying to ourselves. The administration said RTHK as an organization to serve the public and sufficient resources will be allocated to the station to do just that. To serve the community means to serve the public. It doesn't mean to serve the administration. How come the government is now saying that the station should take regard to officials' feelings because of the uh, empty chair incident? Don't tell RTHK to report fairly, but you, you then criticize them for doing exactly that. Community channels and digital channels are there to encourage more public participation. And on the charter, it says the RTHK should uphold the highest professional standards of journalism. But if the head of the station sets restrictions to staff creativity, how can the staff produce quality programs? The charter says the station should be professional, but what they produce is not professional. Does it mean that you are contradicting yourselves? Hong Kong people want something simple. We just want to listen to the news on the radio and on television. We want to see programs that reflect the truth in a fair manner. You are clamming down on the city forum and on headliners. You only leave programs that praise the government. You can't even offer the minimum. You can satisfy the minimum expectation of Hong Kong people. In that case, are you kidding yourselves when you say you take up the you reflect the mission of the charter? So the government should ensure there is room for freedom for free development and ensure editorial independence of RTHK. Next, Mr. Lo Kai. Good morning. Public service broadcasting is a milestone of a developed city. It shows a city has freedom of speech. Broadcasting should not be just for the audience. It should be monitored by the audience, by the public, and it should the broadcasting should serve the public interest. So we need editorial independence. Public broadcasting is different from commercial broadcasting because it's free from commercial influence or political influence. And a public broadcaster should not be just an official broadcaster. We have heard so many views on whether the station is a government mouthpiece. 
for a station to be the government's mouthpiece and to consider whether officials will be embarrassed is not something a public broadcaster should consider. It's only something that you see under a Stalinist regime which clamps down on people's thoughts. However, it is exactly what RTHK faces at present. During Donald Chung and CY Leung's reign, people say that some of their missions is to control RTHK. We know not if it's true, but what we see is that the administration says we need independent PSB, but this is this task is taken up by an official department for charter and other relevant arrangements they are made up and decided by the administration the AO heading the station lacks journalism experience and he says he is the editor in chief and he has to be responsible for final editorial decisions Editorial independence covers reporters of all ranks. It means they make professional decisions according to journalism principle. And in doing so, they are doing the job of a public broadcaster. The head of LTHK lacks this experience after he took office. Roy Tang repeatedly embarrasses people of Hong Kong and embarrasses RTHK. I'm not going to repeat his acts. It shows he's not safeguarding editorial independence. He is carrying out political mission. He even asked Mr. Forever C to share his political mission. It shows that this kind of it shows that the administration sees RTHK as a mouthpiece of the government. I hope the government will stay away from interfering with the editorial independence of RTHK. Next, Mr. Lei Chilong. RTHK should not be the mouthpiece of an administration, and we think the station should be independent from the government. However, in the review report in uh, 07, it rules out the possibility of RTHK being turned into an independent company. And since then, an advisory committee was set up and an AO was parachuted to head the station. And since then, we have heard reports about RTHK's editorial independence was interfered. For FSC, acting appointment was C was ended, and in being in a report, Mr. C said he was asked by the DB to take a more political mission. He says he was under the pressure of his supervisor, and one can only imagine how heavy the pressure was. And in refusing to take up political mission, his career was affected. We are worried that only those who are obedient would be promoted in the future. Another incident that warrants our concern is about City Forum. Last September, there was this empty chair incident. And at that time, there was keen dis uh, discussion on national, discussion, uh, national studies. And Anna Wu and Eddie Ng were invited to the discussion. Empty chairs were placed because the officials refused to turn up. We think it was justified. However, Roy Tang later reminded the management that they should not embarrass the absentees. Roy Tang's kind of editorial independence means he consider the feelings of the officials and he doesn't take regard of the public sentiments. So is he a DB for the people or for the government? 
As for the idea of headliners, when uh, the Hitler character idea was put forward, nobody put forward strong opposition. However, later it was not the case. It was a kind of act to clamp down on freedom of speech. We think the RTHK should be independent from the administration and should be a public broadcaster in, a co in the sense that in an international sense. Deputations have already spoken and we will now let the administration to respond. There have been so many accusations just now, and they are the old accusations. But I think most of the deputations talked about Roy Tang, so I will let the administration to respond. Chairman, I have to stress that editorial independence of RTHK is a common goal for all of us. It's stated clearly in the charter. We hope the station will come up with fair and even-handed reports and it's going to be and the station is a platform for people to express their views. All these are stated clearly in the charter and we take them solemnly. As for appointing an AO to be the director of broadcasting the DB I said it in the past, I'm going to repeat it again. We have no plans to make it a regular appointment, a regular practice. And there are tasks for Mr. Tang, and we are carrying out the tasks gradually. But this practice is not going to be a regular one. We don't have plans for that. As for independence of RTHK, we discussed it in the past. And we have discussed it for a long time. Since year 2000, there has not been recruitment. But now, we have set down some goals for ourselves in terms of recruitment. We have already cut contract staff by 10% and uh, civil servant posts have been up by over 10%. Some posts have to be kept and we are doing our arrangements gradually. For digital broadcasting, as a management of broadcaster and setting up a CIBS fund and relocating broadcasting house we are already doing that, all these, and the relocation of broadcasting house have been decided. I will not comment on the promotion arrangement of any particular civil servants. There is an established system for that, and we have an independent system to monitor the situation. As I said, if a civil servant thinks that he's being asked to carry out duties that is in contrary to the principles of a civil servants, then we welcome such reporting and that matter will be passed on to the CSB. Mr. Tang. Ever since 2011 up to March this year, there has been issues and reports about editorial independence of RTHK. In fact, at the meeting on March 11th, I made it, I already gave a clear account of all these incidents and I submitted a detailed report to the chairman of the panel on 11th of March. In fact, such information has been with the paper that in Annex 1 and 2, so I'm not going to repeat points made. I want to make three points. First of all, allegation that I carry out political mission. Discussions of all these programs are open and they have been completed. 
Those took part include uh, the management of RTHK and the executive producers, frontline reporters of these programs. Before March 8th, nobody even said that these discussions are about political missions. However, on March 8th, several newspapers quoted internal news from RTHK saying that these discussions are political are about political mission. Just now the representative of Journalists Association said that Mr Forever said Mr Forever C claimed that he was asked to carry out a certain political mission. But my recollection was that Mrs C never used the word political mission. Mr C in a radio interview and also after a the the, the staff Union meeting uh, in meeting the press, Mr. C said that he felt uh, political pressure, something not direct. Uh, I've heard uh, Mr. C using the term political pressure, but not political mission. The management uh, that, that so far the management can explain by um, um, written in written form. All our discussion. Is to say um, emails, and if you have the emails, you will not have any misunderstanding. Say the so-called empty chair incident in the uh, public affairs section. Um, their response was that the discussion was effective and useful. On various occasions, we stated our positions. And the parties involved didn't. Uh, explain openly uh, their position. We heard uh, from the media that uh, he wanted to speak when he was given adequate legal protection because he was afraid of being sued for defamation. We have the view that the media should speak the truth under all circumstances, as it is said in the editorial of newspaper, speaking the truth. And honesty is the best defense to defamatory. On the 19th of March, in responding to a newspaper inquiry, uh, I said that to enable staff of RTHK to speak freely, the even if the allegations made by any colleague uh, is found to be unfi uh, unfounded, I will not uh, take up any uh, civil litigation against uh, such uh, staff members. In the past few months, since um, no one has, has uh, openly uh, has, uh, provided uh, details. Um, um, Hong Kong RT, RTHK has suffered seriously for that. Now I open the floor to members. Three minutes each. Ms. Claudia Mo has a motion. I will deal with that later. And I've already um, asked the uh, I have already asked the clerk to uh, make uh, Xerox copies for you, and the copy is coming. Uh, three minutes each, and let me tell you the uh, list: uh, Claudia Mo, Charles Mo, Emily Lau, Ma Fung Kuo, Yip Kin Yun, Sid Ho, um, Raymond Chan. Who else? If none, if there is none, then I'll draw a line there. Claudia Mo, and also Po Che. Uh, First of all, I want to express my regret. It seems that DAB representative does not know the difference between a private sector broadcaster and the um, public broadcaster, and he lumps everything together. But that's okay because freedom of speech. Lo Yokai uh, claims that RTHK is suffering from a Stalinist intervention. And as for Journalist Association's point concerning the director of broadcasting, doesn't know what is meant by public interest, and for FSC is not promoted because he refuses to um, implement the political missions given to him. And Janet Mack is well known to many people, and uh, she uh, say says that you are arrogant. You uh, do things at a whim. You you go your own way, and I really appreciate the word use. Um, I really appreciate the term 
used by Mr. Wong that you are a killer, a blatant killer. So I just want to know who is your boss. Now you are using public money, you are using taxpayers' money, and uh, your boss should be the people of Hong Kong. The second question is who gives you the power? Who uh, tells you that you are entirely uh, responsible, but RTHK is not a uh, shop selling peanuts owned by you. It is not your own shop. Now, you have been uh, criticized by people from all quarters. You just uh, repeated what you've said before without any shame. Do you feel shameful? Do you feel ever? Uh, did you ever feel shameful? Now, after you have spoken, I hope that the uh, Taikin man. I uh, just want to know how you can give the RTHK a fair deal. Uh, uh, some tens of seconds left, Mr. Tang. Uh, we'd like to answer the uh, allegations. Or uh, Taikin man, uh, Taikin man. Perhaps let Taikin man say. Uh, I think I'm just repeating myself if I answer the question. Uh, Mr. Taikin Man, do you think you have uh, given a fair deal to the RTHK colleagues? I thank Ms. Mo for the question. The objective of the RTHK um, have been stated. All along, we um, defend the role of a public service broadcaster, and public service is the main task. Now, our South Union colleagues uh, said that we should uphold professionalism. Um, professionalism and professional independence are the principles we have up, been upholding. Next, Mr. Charles Mock. Now, the uh, speech by Mr. Tang mentioned political mission, political pressure. It's a play of words. It's very simple. They ask Mr. C whether he feels there is political mission, whether he feels political pressure. I don't know whether you have communication. If you have not, then you have not done your part as a boss or as a superior. Uh, but but uh, in the eyes of the government, you are doing very, your job very well. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been promoted to staff grades, uh, to uh, staff grades, uh, or rather, uh, to uh, directorate uh, six, uh, level six. Uh, maybe um, uh, you will be promoted. Uh, you are not uh, just uh, to level limited to level f level five, but uh, level six. Now, um, can we be informed the achievement of um, Mr. Tang and prove that he is worth uh, the promotion? Now, the secretary says that uh, the permanent secretary says that she is not going to comment on the promotion of an individual, but she owes the public. A, uh, an explanation. The AO has no experience, and he is put um, to the uh, in the post of the editorial in chief of the RTHK, and that owes an explanation. And it's said that the that is an extraordinary arrangement because nobody can be promoted uh, internally, and there is no sort of person to be recruited outside. But it's strange that an AO is able to fill the job. And that the decision is already very strange. I just want to know whether in, uh, within the RTHK, no one is capable of leading the RTHK. Mr. Tai has been working with Mr. Tang. Uh, in what way uh, are you training Mr. Tai? And is Mr. Tai ready to take up the pose? And if it's ready, then I want to ask Mr. Tai, the deputy director. Uh, has Mr. Tai provided enough retraining to you? Two questions for the uh, one for permanent secretary, uh, the assessment of the performance of uh, the Roy Tang by the permanent secretary, and also retraining of the uh, deputy director. Two questions. The director. I'm going to answer two questions. Am I going to answer two questions? As for the first question, the question is put to permanent secretary. I'll let you answer this question first. You answer this.
Now concerning the rank or level, do you have the duty to train him? If one is going to be promoted, or if one is to try for a more senior post, then one has to follow the rules and procedures of civil service, and that is an appraisal form. Everybody re uh, needs opportunity and experience and qualifications. He is unable to train his deputy, and it is not his duty. Maybe it is his duty, but he's not capable. But I think maybe within his um, terms of reference, uh, he has to train up the deputy uh, director to be a um, director. As for the, um, the internal promotion uh, of the RTHK, uh, I think the department heads may have a say, and then the Civil Service Bureau may have a say. Uh, what is the performance of Mr. Tang? Is he arrogant? Well, I cannot openly comment on the performance of a colleague. I just want to know what is his achievement. Well, uh, his uh, performance is open uh, to uh, the um, assessment of the public. I've mentioned uh, his task in the um, past year or so, and people can see what he has achieved. As for the uh, transfer and deployment and promotion of civil servants, there is an established system. And within that system, not a single person can call the shots. It is the decision within the system, and there is a monitoring body, and it is a fair and just system. Next, Assembly Lao. Thank you, Chairman. I think the individuals and groups are coming to give their views. The Permanent Secretary says that there is a good promotion system within civil service. Now, this is a very controversial case, and if you promote an AO, uh, within uh, such a controversy, you've breached the system. So uh, the system has been flouted. The system is no longer working. Mr. Forever C, is he still the acting assistant director? The case has uh, been um, put to the CSB uh, under an appeal. He has appealed to the um, CSB against the decision. Now, according to the staff union, their representative, Ms. Jeanette Mack, said that the RTHK had suffered from unprecedented interference. In the uh, first few paragraphs, they mentioned the empty chair incident. Uh, a week ago, when I appeared at the city forum, there was an open that there was an empty chair. In fact, Mr. Raymond Ho has arrived. Uh, Mr. Chair said that there must be an empty chair. Why should there be an empty chair? Because we have invited DAB, we have invited Liberal Party, and they have refused to come. And now we've got Dr. Raymond Ho. And please come and take your seat. Now here, they criticize the administration. The staff members feel that they have the power to handle that. And after arguing with the staff members, the director says that he doesn't allow empty chair. And if an empty chair is to be placed, it should be decided by the assistant director of broadcasting. This is a breach of an established system that has been there for decades and has called and caused widespread objection. Now, um, for FSC, so the assistant director and he has approved that there has been a sort of white terror within the RTHK, and how can the RTHK um, be run smoothly? Can you tell us tension is very high within the RTHK, and just an empty chair has caused so many paragraphs in the paper? You owe us an explanation. Let him explain. Let him explain. Yes, I'll give you time. You don't need to be... Um, 
very agitated. The question is whether uh, for FSC is so the acting assistant secretary. Uh, is acting assistant uh, director. Yes, he is. Uh, answer the uh, empty chair incident. Director, Chairman, about the empty chair incident, in Annex B of the paper, I have already gave a clear explanation. Chairman, I'm asking him about the paper of the submitted by the staff union. They strongly oppose your decision. So how can you run the station? How come you can't have a smooth discussion within the station? Last Sunday, they placed an other empty chair. So were they criticized for that? The incident quoted by Ms. Lau. If the producer followed the producer's guidelines and because some guests turned down the invitation, that is something they can do. Now for the for the national studies discussion, in fact, the host did not mention the guests were invited in the first place. You can see the rerun of the programs online. I think the system is a civilized system, and the discussion was a civilized discussion, and we completed the discussion. It's all of a sudden that people say it was a kind of political mission on the 8th of March. Mr. Ma, since I become a LASHCO member, I think I only shake hands once with Mr. Roy Tang. Some RTHK staff said he was arrogant. I don't know if it's true. I've known Mr. Tai Kin Man for over 30 years on many informal occasions. I recommended Mr. Tai to be the director of broadcasting. I think he is capable. For the two persons here, I can't tell, I can't conclude who is more capable, who is more suitable to be the director of broadcasting. To pick someone for such an important post, you have to consider many factors. I think the most important thing is to see whether they have done a good job since they have taken up the post. The allegations so far are serious, but so far not one incident is supported by concrete evidence. Not one tells us that they haven't done a good job. First incident, the empty chair incident. I have to tell members about my personal experience. After the handover, whenever discussion during discussions of RTHK, I supported RTHK. I like their programs a lot, like the Under the Lion Rock and Hong Kong Connection. I really like their programs and I support RTHK. So. Every time I say people should respect the editorial independence of RTHK. And I want to tell you something that happened over 10 years ago. I don't really want to talk about it. I was phoned by RTHK asking me to attend a program and I turned it down because I would be otherwise engaged. It was not a phone in show and I heard the host saying that they invited Mr. Ma, but Mr. Ma refused to come up to the program. I was very angry after hearing that. So while I was driving, I called them up. It was not illegal to drive while talking on the phone yet. So I called them up and I said that I was not dodging the issue. I then asked them what they wanted to ask me. I think at that time, Mr. Chu Pui Heng was the director. I think I made a complaint, maybe to him or to Mr. Tai. Time's up for you, Mr. Ma, for your old stories. I'll give you one more minute. I just want to say for the empty chair incident, 
is exactly something like that. You have to find out the cause. You have to find out the reasons. For people to have a feeling that they are being wrongly accused is not right. Next incident for the not Hitler incident. I don't think the director has done anything wrong. We have to understand that the whole world think it's not appropriate to use Hitler to use Hitler in such a satirical program. So I don't think the director has made any major mistake in this in his decision. And so far, there has not been any concrete evidence put forward by those involved. There are many accusations put forward by deputations. Can they put forward any concrete evidence to support the accusations? Mao Zedong's hands are bloody, and sometimes he is made fun of. Next, Mr. Yip Kin Yun. Chairman, I'm not a member of this panel. I thank Chairman for giving me this opportunity to speak. Just now, people talk about truth. Mr. Tang just now said there have been accusations, but there has not been any accusation supported by truth, by evidence. Now, the only way to ensure that is to make use of powers and privilege. Mr. Tang, my question for you is would you support Lashko in making use of powers and privilege to ensure the right to speak of Mr. C? And you yourself would also be protected throughout the course. Would you support this decision if there's a one? Chairman, I can't tell Lashko what they should do. Um, an official, but I think I've made my point clear. Isn't truth enough for members to decide whether you should go ahead with the decision? As at today, parties, individuals involved, RTHK staff, reporters, they should speak the truth without fear. If a reporter has to resort to powers and privilege for him to speak the truth, it is really sad. I can only say I have done my duty. I've made op open statement that I would not use my right to go for civil legal proceedings. And I respect Lashko. Mr. Yip, I still have time, Chairman. Sorry about that. Go on, please. Mr. Tang, I want to understand more about your reply. Lashko or panels ask people involved about their attitude, about how they handle certain issues. So do you wish to see, do you wish to hear the reason behind the allegations? And you would also be given a chance to tell your own story. And of course, decision is for us to make whatever you say is us who make the decision. So can I ask you to state your views once again? Chairman, I support people to tell the truth under all circumstances. Mr. Ho, Chairman, the independence of RTHK is a sad story. The government pitches itself against the people. Roy Tang became the director, and he carries our the mission of the administration. With more criticism, he got more pro uh, higher promotion. He was promoted from a directorial grade 5 to D6. But I think you should ask for reposting with your achievement. You had 
the RTXK and there should be new channels for TV programs and radio programs and you have to handle reloca relocation of broadcasting house. For FSC is not an engineer. The chief engineer to help him is a should be a charter engineer. How long has this post been vacant? Tell us, Mr. Tang. You are the supervisor of Mr. C. Mr. C is not the professional in your field. You have the responsibility to choose someone to help him, but you refuse to do that. You are actually fooling him around. He is not in your field, so he can't sit comfortably in his post. Tell us, how long has the post been vacant? What have you done to try to fill the post? RTHK has to create new TV channels. It's been set down in uh, 09. The chief engineer, so-called chief engineer, left the post last year. Which month? I can't tell. Ever since it's left his post, we started recruitment exercise. I can't tell you the qualifications and the number of candidates. But in present days Hong Kong, I don't have any more time. I have to interrupt, Chairman. Director, you are here at LegCo. Show some respect. Miss Ho, the three minutes are for me. They failed to recruit someone in a year. I just want to know if you ask for redeployment from CEDD to fill the post. You can't even do that. Are you trying to dry up RTHK? This is an unfound accusation. The colleague left last October because of his age, and since then we started recruitment exercise. Next, Raymond Chen. I've been in the media, the broadcasting field, for 15 years. I haven't been employed by RTHK, but I fully appreciate the pressure of RTHK staff. If my then broadcaster, if the broadcaster I worked for asked me to report my brainstorming idea, my brainstorming process, I would feel much pressure. So for timid colleagues, they would tell less, and for lazy colleagues, they wouldn't even bother to report such things. In fact, this act pluck creativity from the root from the very beginning. If you carry on with this practice, you would be very successful in carrying out your mission. When I was with the radio station, my boss would not be very blatant in his or her criticism. He or she would be more tactful. Now, coming back to my question, the administration said there is no plan to make the practice of assigning AO to head the station a regular one. The administration said after recruitment exercise they could not identify someone suitable to take up the post. That's why they had no choice but to assign an AO to take up the post. But usually they will only serve one term. The recruitment exercise was not open. We know not who you interviewed. And even after the post was filled, you did not give explanation. So how can you ensure people understand that you had no choice but to get an AO to fill the post? Is it the case that you don't trust someone from the media enough and that no one in the media is suitable, is capable. That's why you 
resort to this practice? And will Mr. Tang be reposted? There are rumors about that. Permanent Secretary, about deployment, I can't talk about deployment of civil servants. If I remember correctly, in 2011, we came to LACHCO to explain why an AO was given the post of director. And we also gave explanation about the recruitment exercise. Yeah, uh, and I can tell you the established arrangements. If we see the need, uh, if we see a vacancy, then uh, we will um, do an uh, internal promotion exercise. If somebody is eligible, then the post will be filled. If we can't get any suitable person internally, we get an open recruitment. We've done it with the RTHK, and we'll do the same for other departments. We have three members in the line for the first round. In fact, I have drawn the line at uh, after poll chair, but two members then subsequently entered, and they have raised their hands, and I can only allow, I, I must allow them to speak. Uh, I have uh, half an uh, we have about half an hour to go, and uh, we have to spend about ten minutes to deal with Claudia Mo's motion. And I also want to give some time to the groups and individuals um, who would like to respond to the administration. And then I will draw a line here. Paul Chair followed by Lee Chow Yan and James To. Ms. Emily Lau has asked for a second round. If there is enough time, I will allow, him to, I'll allow her to have a second attempt. Um, OK. Paul Chair. When the media is involved, whether uh, um, you can hear people's thinking, uh, Mr. Chen said that um, when he was in the uh, Metro Radio, he uh, had to uh, toe the line because there would be consequences, even if it is for the uh, commercial radio. People can hear the political inclination or position of the uh, talk show host. As for the RTHK, I think the RTHK is most politically neutral uh, among the three radio stations. But I can still hear uh, the so-called the line, as mentioned by Mr. Chen. The director of broadcasting looks after uh, broadcasting as well as administrative work. It seems that. Uh, no uh, reply has been given. And I have not sh shaken the hand of uh, the director since he took the office. Uh, so um, apart from um, the, uh, I think uh, there is no help uh, to be given uh, to, uh, there is no helping hand to be given to the director if I look around. Now, last Sunday, uh, I, um, it was claimed that no one was asked, or rather, no no one from the establishment could uh, fill the uh, vacancy. I called up uh, Chair, Mr. Chair, and asked if he didn't consider me to belong to the establishment. In fact, I don't count myself to be one of the establishment. In appointing uh, directors, uh, sometimes uh, we have the uh, same issue. Say, uh, Regina was not uh, from the disciplined forces, but she uh, was appointed director of immigration. Um, in um, that is a sensitive issue. Uh, shouldn't the RTHK be uh, more uh, concerned, uh, sensitive about uh, these appointments? Concerning the appeal by Mrs. C, at what stage is it, and is it appropriate to uh, look into that uh, under the electrical powers and privileges ordinance? I don't know who can give us uh, any view on this. As for the promotion of an individual colleague, I cannot comment on his uh, situation. 
I can only say that in considering the promotion or deployment of a colleague, we have to uh, take into account his track record, uh, whether he's suitable for the job, and also whether uh, he's up to the uh, performance uh, requirements. And Mr. C is still acting. Is he uh, under the appeal mechanism, or is uh, is his case being handled? Yes, uh, my understanding is that the uh, CSB is handling his appeal. Uh, Li Chao Yan, I think I find it hard to swallow. Uh, he said that the journalist should uh, do things without fear, um, and. Um, he give up um, his right to uh, sue for defamation, but you don't need to resort to the law. You can use your power uh, to uh, oppress your subordinate. I want to ask: Is it because uh, Forever C doesn't want to um, f implement your political mission, the political mission given by you to, uh, on him? Uh, he is now being dealt with uh, by you, and uh, has his acting uh, be uh, duties be terminated? Well, he's still acting. Now, some acting is acting with a view to promotion, and the other is acting uh, with convenience. Now, those in the CSP knows it uh, fully. I want to know his status. Is it acting with a view or acting with convenience? Can you use Chinese? Ah, I don't know the Chinese term. Well, that's uh, invented by the British. Mrs. C, Mrs. C uh, March, starting from March last year, he started uh, the acting post. Well, when he has been acting for a certain period of time, if uh, he is suitable for promotion, then he'll be promoted. And if he's not suitable for promotion, uh, then the acting will be uh, stopped. As for acting for convenience, it is only uh, for a short leave. Say, for example, somebody's on leave. Then that is an, the acting arrangement. I want to clarify Mr. Lee's point, Mr. Lee's uh, view with regard to a certain assumption. Say, a colleague is asked uh, to implement a certain political mission. Uh, when Mr. Lee was not here, the uh, if you said it before, then you need to, you don't need to repeat. I want to know how you uh, oppress Mr. C. Uh, say yes or no. Uh, how how did you? Uh, uh, what is his appraisal? What is his appraisal by you? Uh, did you oppress him or not? No. He didn't answer the question on appraisal. What is uh, your appraisal towards him, Mr. Lee? We've talked. We said about it. We've talked about it before. They will not mention anything about appraisal. They say it belongs to the civil service uh, bureau. Uh, uh, he has answered you. Of course, he said no. He didn't oppress Mr. C. But how long are you going to consider his acting arrangement? How long are you going to consider this acting arrangement? The Prime Secretary, the CSP will make a decision. I don't know the time frame. James Tell. Now I have this question for the Prime Secretary. The uh, incumbent director will soon be uh, posted out of the RTHK. My concern is the uh, future director of broadcasting. Now you say that there is a need to uh, appoint an AO to the post. You've given your reasons. Our concern is that you appoint AOs to the post. If you ask the whole community whether they uh, trust Mr. Tang, they don't trust Mr. Tang. I don't trust Mr. Tang either. Now, if if the post is filled by internal promotion, in fact, many colleagues have been working for decades in the RTXK. You say uh, he is not, they are not qualified. Even the AS, uh, AD has been working for decades in the RTXK. 
You say he's not up to that? Now, this is a sensitive post. You need to get people's trust. You need to get people believe uh, that RTHK has editorial independence. And if you can appoint a staff uh, among the uh, within the RTHK to take up the post, uh, that is very important. It's just not. It is not like any other company. Uh, you, you just appoint somebody is capable. Now, if you appoint somebody who cannot one who cannot win the trust of the community. Then it's useless. Even if you have done something fair, people will think that it is otherwise. So you have to be careful about it. The RDHK is very unique. If it is a CNE department, uh, they can. Uh, if somebody is parachuted into uh, the post of the director, that's about morale only. But if it is the RDHK, is more than that. It's about editorial independence and perception of. Independence. If you say get a second class one, but if that person is able to win the confidence of the community, uh, that's worth doing it. I'm not saying that the RTHK colleague who's appointed to take up the post is second class. I'm not saying that. But even if that is the case, it's still worth doing because that, that helps to win confidence. The question is that after Tang is promoted, after Roy Tang is promoted, will another AO be parachuted in the post? Chairman, as I said earlier, we have no intention to regularize the present arrangement. When there is a vacancy, we will follow the established procedure. Leung Kwok Hong. Mr. Tang, I gave him a rod. I uh, gave him a rod. I don't insult him. He doesn't have the knowledge, and he has no uh, team to back him up, just like C. Y. Leung. Uh, should uh, forever C uh, be uh, acting forever, or should he be promoted? I've never seen uh, such a big controversy. As far as the uh, director of broadcasting is concerned, now you say you didn't oppress Mr. C. Of course, he, uh, you, uh, your answer is none. Otherwise, you would have to go. Well, you don't have the knowledge. You are not a professional. How can you assess whether Mr. C. is up to the job or not? You didn't study journalism. What was your degree? What was your degree? What was your post? What did you do? Well, that is irrelevant, Mr. Long. Yes, Mr. Chairman is relevant. The professionals, no, the, the uh, AOs are posted everywhere. Now, the profession, the, the media uh, persons, the media persons are professionals, and they belong to the fourth power. Uh, and uh, you are a parachuter, and you are parachuted into the post. Mrs. Mr. Tang, my question is: How uh, do you assess Mr. C? Should he continue to act? Well, Mr. is still acting. Whether he will be promoted is another question. Well, that's meaningless if he acts forever. The CSB has no representative here, but you are his superior, and you should be honest. Mr. Long is late, and you have already answered the question. Please repeat yourself. Oh, okay. Forget it then. Forget it. Let me continue. Well, my uh, view is very simple. You are not up to the job as the director of broadcasting. Your performance is very poor. Go back uh, to be a traffic light. Okay. Uh, yes or no? Well, he can't answer your question. Well, he is under the authority of somebody else. He is a uh, uh, an AO. Last time I asked uh, C. Y. Long, uh, Po Chen and Ao said he would not, and Mr. Ao said that he would not comment on individual cases. 
concerning uh, the uh, basement of CY Leung. I think you, you, you owe us an answer. How many Roy Tang are there? How many uh, uh, Forever C are there? How many uh, parachuted into the post? You cannot uh, just uh, dodge the question. Twelve members have spoken. Uh, Ms. Emily Lau asked for a second round, but she says that she is not going to attempt to make a second attempt. I leave the floor open to the groups and individuals who have been invited, uh, and then they can respond to the views made by uh, officials and members. I have seen uh, the uh, staff union of the RTHK, uh, Ms. Choi, each. Uh, given if each will be given two minutes, two minutes each, we still have to uh, deal with the motion. Emily Lau asked about the relationship of the director and the staff. The director said the discussion was peaceful. Of course, the staffers were reasonable and the discussions were peaceful. However, I have to say, staffers are feeling frustrated and we are confused. And we feel pressure. Sometimes a director would mention, say, for example, the empty chair incident. For staffers who are more junior, they think it's a fine decision, it's a decision that warrants no problems. But how come frontline staff, no, frontline staff and senior staff think the decision? was not a problematic one. How come the director thought the decision would embarrass officials? At that time, we had discussion with the director because he is not a journalist himself. And we understand after this incident, we have to seek approval from assistant director rather than the producer. This makes us feel, un feel uneasy. At the beginning, we thought we could always talk to the director about certain incidents. Maybe he did not understand, but for incidents about changing Hong Kong connection and headliners to ATV to be aired and to scrap Lashka review, these cause puzzlement within the staff. This is against the common sense of journalists and these decisions are against the core values of our THK staff. We are not targeting any individual. We are targeting the practice of parachuting AO to the station because AO is someone without experience in the field. It's only because of this practice that creates the lack of trust. Who's next? Mr. Chen, Mr. Chen from DAB. Thank you, Chairman. I'm not going to comment on whether Mr. Tang will stay or not. I want to talk about principle. He was appointed as the head of the station. This is something that happens around the world. It shows he is good at his job. Let me ask members, before you become a LASHCO member, what did you do? Some may be lawyers, some may be businessmen, some may talk up public posts. And now you are a LASHCO member, you monitor the government. So let, let's apply the same logic to Mr. Tang. If he is not capable of monitoring our THK, sorry, speakers off mic. Respect me. I still have time to speak. Let's apply the same logic. In any event, he is in the post. He is capable of doing his job to carry out his duty. Mr. Chen, I have to remind you, we are talking about OTHK and your two minutes are very precious. So please come back to our discussion, the focus of the discussion. I just want to say, Mr. Tang in RTHK can do that. 
in principle. Members, order please. No DAB member is here. It's not fair for pro democratic camp to target on Mr. Chen, and you have a and it's not time for you to speak, members. Mr. Chen, carry on, please. Please go on. I give you dozens more seconds. I want to respond to Miss Mo's question. She asked me a question. Members of the public have concern about credibility of the media. RTHK is one organization in the media. Now, the public perception may not be targeted against RTHK, but I think the RTHK should see how it can enhance its credibility. Ms. Mo, Ms. Mo, you talk about Mr. Chen when you spoke, so you have to give him a chance to respond. Next deputation, Mr. Ma is not here now. But I think his accusation is a serious one. I took part in the National Studies debate, and so I'm concerned about Miss Anna Wu and the Secretary for Education not turning up at the discussion, even after invitation was sent out. And the director of broadcasting, did he ask the staffers to be held accountable? I want to ask him if this incident was discussed. And if so, we only put, ask for such a discussion as a reasonable staff. And we did not make up the discussion. Next, Mr. Lui. Mr. Tang said Mr. C did not openly say he was asked to take up political mission by the director. In fact, on March 12th, Mr. C was interviewed by commercial radio. At that time, he was asked if the director asked him to take up political mission. Mr. C then said, I feel I did not do anything that's against professionalism, professional conduct. But you have to understand his feelings I'm talking about. I have this feeling. And this was interviewed, this was, was reported saying that Mr. C admitted for the first time he was asked to take a political mission. Mr. Lowe, I want to remind the administration that the United Nations gave views on the situation of human rights in Hong Kong. The UN asked the administration to remove measures that restrict freedom of speech, especially restrictions on the media. The restrictions should be removed. And there should be amendments made. The amendments should be should ensure that PSB should run independently and should not be within the task. Of, it should not be the task of the government. The government may say the issue was discussed, and that you have public support, but you hijacked public opinion. So would you adjust or change the structure of RTHK so that RTHK staff will feel fearless when they speak the truth speak the truth? Director, you want to respond? Just to give information. When I responded to Mr. Lui's speech 
I wanted to clarify that Mr. C did not ever say the words political mission in his own mouth. He did not say that. I want to clarify that point. For the interview at Commercial Radio, I have a transcript, a verbatim transcript here. Mr. C never talked about political mission, not the, the two words. Time's up for the discussion, and we have to deal with the motion moved by Ms. Mo. Proposed to extend the meeting by 15 minutes so that the motion can be discussed by members. Motion reads that the ITB panel thinks the Lashko should use powers and privilege to make inquiry into the promotion arrangements of Mr. Forever C Assistant Director, Acting Assistant Director. Now this is the ITB panel. And as the chairman of this panel, I have the power to decide whether a motion put forward by members should be included in our agenda. I'll open the floor for a discussion on the motion, but the promotion arrangement of a civil servant is the ta task of CSB. We can always discuss such matters in LASHCO, but to invoke powers and privilege to make inquiry into the promotion of a civil servant, Mr. C I think it's something for member to see, to, to discuss, to think about. But I have to remind members that the matter will have to go to the House Committee and the Council meeting, even if we invoke powers and privilege in this panel. So is it worthwhile for us to invoke powers and privilege in this panel? I'll leave members to think about it, but I, the final decision rests in me. Mr. Albert Chen, one minute for you. Chairman, I fully understand the rationale behind Ms. Mo's motion, but the motion itself doesn't show the, this rationale. This matter should not be about the promotion of just an individual. It should be about editorial independence and the responsibility of LTHK. If it's so amended, I think the motion is worth supporting. I wonder if Ms. Mo is happy to make such amendments, say, for example, to include editorial independence of LTHK, to include unreasonable political mission and intervention. You can always include uh, asking Mr. Tang to step down. Next, Mr. Ronnie T Tong. I respect your powers, Chairman, and the motion is a simple one. It's not about inquiry into, into Mr. C's promotion. In fact, um, it is about how Mr. Tang handles promotion matter. Usually, motions like this is passed. So this motion is not is not about the promotion of Mr. C. It's not an inquir inquiry into that. It's about the operation and the management of RTHK. So I think it is in line with the principle you mentioned, Chairman. But if Amendments will make the motion clearer. I think it's fine, and I support that. Ms. It Ho, Chairman, even if we pass the motion, it won't be passed at House Committee. Shouldn't we condemn Mr. Tang for his intervention into editorial independence of LTHK? Will Ms. Mo consider that? 
Miss James Toe. Having heard Mr. Albert Chen, I think he has a point. I share his view. I think we have to be accurate here. Otherwise, on the face of it, the motion is just about how one deals with another person's <coughs> promotion. But emo but promotion is something very broad. We have to consider whether editorial independence, freedom of reporting, political mission are involved here, whether they play a part in affecting the promotion. I think these are the crux of the matter. Many members have already expressed their views, and at the beginning I talk about the background, and I'm going to summarize here. We have to be accurate about the wording. Mr. Tong, we shouldn't uh, be uh, come a laughing stock. Now, there's a proposal to exercise um, the electrical powers and privileges ordinance. That is an important issue. Of course, I will not uh, object to that. Even if you put it, uh, you can't get it through the House committee, not to say um, the meeting of the LegCo. I'm the chairman. Unless I am pushed to the point when I when I have to make a decision, uh, make a judgment, I will make a judgment. Uh, but I, in the past, I didn't exercise my power to veto uh, any proposal of members. So um, I open the floor to members. I give the floor to Miss Mo. See if she will listen to good advice and amend her the the wording of her motion in order to get the support of more members. Miss Ho, Miss Mo. Thank you. Concerning the uh, Forever Sea incident, it reflects the pressure suffered by the RTHK. In the motion, I cannot be long-winded, and I try to be neutral. I want to refute the point made by Roy Tang. Um, media people don't need to. Uh, media people doesn't uh, speak the truth. Now, if uh, he is sued for def defamation. He is sued by. He will be sued by the government. Yes, I'm speaking on the motion. If you are sued for defamation, you suffer pressure, psychological pressure, financial pressure, so, uh, and many kinds of pressure. Well, if C uh, is not protected, the lecture and power and privilege ordinance, he cannot give us the whole truth. The council is a view that the leg count, legislative council should exercise legislative and power and privilege ordinance to um, investigate into the uh, handling of uh, the promotion of forever C, um, the um, intervention of uh, suspect uh, the suspected interference of political uh, the suspicious. Um, Interference into editorial independence by the director of broadcasting. This council's view that the uh, LegCo should exercise LegCo powers and privileges ordinance in respect of handling the promotion of uh, pro of um, forever C, uh, which is suspected to be interference into the editorial independence by the director of broadcasting. Suspected interference of editorial independence by the director of broadcasting. So, you better be um, precise. Suspected interference of the uh, editorial uh, independence of the RTHK. The um, LegCo should exercise LegCo powers and privileges ordinance to uh, look into the um, promotion of Forever C, which is suspected to be a case of interference of editorial independence of the RTHK by the director of broadcasting, Roy Tang. We've asked the administration 
on the situation of for FSC, and I urge the administration. To, I give the administration one more chance. The allegation is that uh, for FSC is given the political uh, mission, and he refused, and the director of broadcasting. And therefore, um, continued his acting without promoting uh, for FSC. So you need to explain to us uh, what uh, the situation is. The Department, the Department Secretary, uh, that involves the uh, CSP, and we may need to ask the uh, CSP to come. Um, the person, the Department Secretary, Mr. C is still acting. Um, the post of assistant, uh, assistant director. So it's very clear. Mr. C is still the acting assistant director of broadcasting. He's still the acting assistant director. The motion is about uh, the black hand, so to speak, uh, Mr. Roy Tang. The legal advisor has, uh, has reminded me uh, this. Well, it's not just about the electrical pass and previous ordinance. You need to set up a select committee. Either you call with him to if you um, exercise electrical pass and privileges ordinance only, then you can just call him to the panel meeting. So there should be two ways. One is make use of this panel to exercise the electrical pass and privileges ordinance. My understanding is Ms. Mo wants to exercise this power. This panel can be the select committee, can become the select committee. You really need to, uh, we really need to set up a select committee. So we need to add the word to set up a select committee. But whether the select committee is formed by the panel or not, well, I give the floor to the legal advisor. Thank you, Chairman. The wording of the motion is that the LegCo should make use of the LegCo and power, uh, LegCo powers and privilege ordinance to investigate. There are two ways. Uh, section 92 of CAP 382, this panel can be authorized to conduct the investigation, or the LegCo can form a select committee to conduct an investigation. It says that the LegCo and not this committee, or not this panel. Mr. Tong, I really want to put it to the vote. We just cross out the uh, word LegCo. Now, finally, the, Lech the House committee will have to make a decision whether it is uh, to be investigated by select committee or, um, or by this panel. If just uh, we cross out um, the term legislative council, that will be that will still be clear. And, and in fact, uh, Ms. Mo wants to deal with uh, Roy Tang. In fact, um, Ms. Mo has asked to appoint a select committee to investigate into the political, uh, uh, the, the uh, suspected interference by Roy Tang into editorial independence of the RTHK and exercise uh, section 9-1 of the electrical power and privileges, uh, electrical and power and privileges ordinance. You had it before, but it was not successful. Maybe you have forgotten that. Uh, I don't know what do you mean. I really don't know what do you mean. What are you getting at? It seems that you have forgotten that. I, uh, our THK is most close to my heart. Uh, how can you criticize me? Now, do you accept your previous? Uh, do you? Now, I can only tell you that you made a similar. Uh, motion before and you were made and your motion was made in a hurry and you've not thought it through it's a waste of our time no it is the present uh, motion we just cross out the term legislative council as said by um 
Mr. Ronnie Tong. Thank you. We have five minutes. I put uh, uh, well. I follow Ms. Mo's motion. Uh, please read out your motion. I just want to remind you that you had a similar motion before it was uh, rather uh, completed, but your motion has been changed uh, today. Your motion has been changed several times. Now concerning the motion, I don't know under what circumstances was the motion read. And shouldn't we consider whether a similar motion is being moved within a certain period of time? Then the motion shouldn't be considered. We should respect the uh, decision of the legislature. We've just uh, hastily uh, move a motion and change it many times and ask us to cast a vote. That's not professional. That's unfair. Now we criticize the RGHK for bad management, but if we are so uh, messy in dealing with these motions, um, we have failed uh, the public. Now we have to uh, deal with this. Uh, we, still, uh, we only have five minutes left. Uh, I want to ask the uh, legal advisor to answer my question. Concerning the provision, it is House Rule uh, Section 22P. It says that uh, a motion can move. Uh, a member can move a motion. Any uh, proposed motion or any proposed amendment should be submitted in writing to the panel. It doesn't say you can't change your wording. As long as it is in writing, it will be allowed. Any motion or proposed amendment, any proposed motion, proposed amendment. Uh, may be submitted in writing. Concerning uh, Ms. Mo, um, she moved a motion at the House Committee on the 12th of March. As for the motion today, it is a motion for the panel. So that's the difference. Speakers not coming through. We still have to go to the House Committee, and uh, the motion was rejected on the twelfth of March. The wording was different, although the target was still uh, Roy Tang. Uh, she proposed to appoint a select committee to investigate into. The uh, suspected political interference into the editorial independence of RTHK by Roy Tang, Director of Broadcasting, and authorized the Select Committee to exercise nine one of the legal powers and privilege ordinance. Later, she withdrew. Today's motion, after three or four changes, the final version is the panel is reviewed that the legal should. Exercise uh, the legal powers and privileges ordinance, and conduct a thorough investigation into the promotion of uh, forever C um, in respect of interference by the uh, into the direct uh, interference into editorial freedom of the RTHK by the um, director of broadcasting Roy Tang. Uh, if you take away the uh, forever C. Um, closed, and it's uh, similar to the one she moved before. The panel is of the view that the Legislative Council should this panel is of the view that the legal powers and privileges ordinance should be invoked to conduct a thorough investigation into the interference of the editorial independence of the RTHK in the incident of our FSC by the Director of Director Broadcasting. Those in favor, please raise their hands. Six. Those against, please raise their hands too. The motion is carried. This uh, panel is the view that the legal powers and privileges ordinance should be in uh, should be invoked 
to conduct a thorough investigation into the uh, interference of editorial freedom by the direct broadcasting in the uh, Forever Sea case. Meeting.